Welcome, everybody. Uh, today we're going to have our Business in Vancouver uh, luncheon uh, discussion. Should be really great. Um, I'm the chairperson from the Downtown Surrey BIA, an organization that's been around since 2003. Uh, and I really feel strongly that, that the organization has made a huge difference in our, our, our area here. First BIA in, in Surrey and uh, one of the strongest. Um, and our motto has always been, uh, we are a community coming together to make S Surrey City Centre the choice to live, work, learn and play. Um, I would like to uh, introduce our good friend Kirk LaPointe. He's the publisher and the editor-in-chief of Business in Vancouver and vice president editorial of Glacier Media. He teaches ethics and leadership at UBC School of Journalism, Writing and Media. Let's have a nice warm applause for, for Kirk. Thank you. Okay, um, so uh, the panel discussion is going to be uh, led by, by Kirk here, and uh, we've got a couple of really good moderators and famous people here today, so really looking forward to, uh, to the meeting. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over Thanks to you. Thank Thanks you. Everybody. Thank you. Let me introduce our participants. Elizabeth Model is the CEO of um, the Downtown Surrey Business Improvement Association. Sorry, quick audio check here. Oh. Okay. I thought I was doing pretty well. <laughs> bit better? Oh, much much better. I, I, I can hear myself now too. Okay. All right, so uh, reminder, of course, we're on ancestral traditional territory here. Grateful to be a guest. And um, our conversation is going to take place over the course of about an hour. We'll have lots of questions, obviously, from our Zoom audience and from people in the, in the room here. But let me introduce our panelists today. Elizabeth Model is the CEO of the Downtown Surrey Business Improvement Association. She, of course, has a, a stellar background in actually representing BIAs, uh, having spent 13 years at the Tri-Cities, uh, running the Tri-Cities uh, BIA, and, of course, has a background in the development industry. Gary Begg is the member of the Legislative Assembly. Uh, he's to her left. Uh, physically and probably ideologically. Uh, he's the led, uh, MLA for Surrey Guildford. He's the government whip in the legislature, and, uh, and we're not going to be uh, crossing him today because, of course, he's a former RCMP inspector, so we'll, we'll make no trouble for you. Uh, that's good to know. And uh, at our far left, Bob Rennie, who is, uh, I think, inarguably our most prominent real estate marketer in this province. Um, he is, of course, uh, CEO, president of Rennie Marketing, and, uh, and of course, is uh, a font of information, great data collector around the industry, and I think we're going to get a lot of insights uh, for I, him. I, I like it that Gary's sitting to my right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, well, you know, Bob, let me, uh, let me start with you, uh, but remind our, our audience that if you want uh, to pose a question here, uh, you know, we, we, we're, we have a monitor right down here at the front. I'll be able to uh, use them just to, uh, we'll make sure that uh, we, we get to questions from the audience very quickly and all of this because I wanted to be quite interactive. But Bob, you know, like I say, you, you, one of your specializations at your company is all of the, you know, the coll collection of data and all of the, you know, you have facts and figures, I think, at your fingertips about Surrey. But I want you to paint a bit of a picture of of why it is, why it is working so well here in order to work at uh, development of the community and what, what have been the factors you that know, have I, made it so, so well I was well saying working. to Mike, you know, I was saying earlier that at a small dinner I was at, that, um, 
Stephen Polos from the Bank of Canada said, and this was about 2009, 2010, as we're coming out of a, <clears throat> a housing crisis in America, he said that uh, jurisdictions that invest in industry are going to fail, and jurisdictions that invest in education are going to succeed. And you've got to give Surrey some points there with what they've done with, with Simon Fraser University. Now UBC is moving out here, and you know what you've done with the hospital, what you've done with Innova Innovation Boulevard. But um, I just I look at it that if Vancouver has 26% of our population, the city of Vancouver has 26% of our population, and 36% of our jobs, where are people going to live? Mm -hmm. And I, I said something that the guys from PCI liked at a recent talk is I'm going with the S's and I'm going with Squamish uh, for lifestyle and a certain livability that cannot be provided in most cities and municipalities throughout uh, the lower mainland. And I'm going with Surrey. You're our second downtown. Like that stake is in the ground. You will have a larger population than the, uh, than the city of Vancouver by the end of this decade. And that you, with your housing, you're, 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 you're concentrating it with services in, in the downtown core. Um, you're not without problems like uh, any growth happens. It's getting that livability and walkability and curating your downtown so that I've, you've got the right services. And uh, a developer that was looking at putting in some office was going to bring in WeWork, shared office space, which, you know, during COVID, is that where we want to be? As, uh, those things have changed. But uh, WeWork said very simply, is there's six good to decent restaurants we can walk to. It wasn't, they weren't upset, and the answer was no, not yet, and they said too early. Mm -hmm. And I think those sort of metrics are things that you really, you know, we, we can get the people here. You know, when, uh, when you know, PCI is sitting here, when, when the, the hub opened at the King George SkyTrain station, it was the first time that we saw the real estate community come out in droves with their purchasers to buy in Surrey. You know, there's been a lot of successes, but they've been stop and start. But that seems to be, it fits with what we said in January, if we were having coffee, under $1,000 per square foot multifamily is recovering while we drink coffee in January. COVID stopped it for a bit. Uh, over $2,000 per square foot downtown Vancouver is 36 to 48 months away because that market is over. But, and I'll stop here, as we cocoon at home and we isolate and we lock down, our aging baby boomers, which are 55 years of age and older, are sitting on $259 billion in clear title housing. They are going to come out of this and buy down further than they thought and transfer more wealth while they're living to their children so they can come out here and buy in Surrey and get their stake in the ground because they know when governments print money and borrow money that either we're going to have to inflation to pay it off, which is a whole other topic, or we're going to see 70% taxes. So I'll leave you at that. Good. Okay. <laughs> good, good explanation. Uh, by the way, for people at home, uh, you'll see people moving across there. Some lunch is being served here. So uh, bear in mind, we're, we're not in the middle of a thoroughfare somehow. Um, but I want, uh, Elizabeth, for you to pick up on that, uh, on what you think has been uh, the evolution of the city and, and what have been the factors that have contributed in a lot of ways to the positive development of the, of the community uh, at, at this stage and where it is today. So... From our standpoint, from a business improvement association, I joined the organization in 2009. At that time, we'd gone through some of the issues with the, uh, the market collapses, et cetera. And um, I believe it was the leadership of the city at that time. It was Mayor Diane Watts, and she put into place some really good incentives and went out literally knocking on developers' doors to, to come to the city and develop a downtown. And that was a vision that the uh, BIA obviously had and promoted and recognizing that it was the official downtown and it was a development community that we as a business improvement association and the city's leadership went after. And obviously all the staff were on board with that. And uh, it's the developers who changed that uh, face, the space and the place of an area. And Gary Begg, when you uh, look at what 
the Horgan government is, is now trying to do in terms of its policies around dealing with municipalities. What, what is the, what's the general broad approach here with the city of Surrey? How, how, and how does it differ, say, than, say, many of the other cities in, in the province? Well, certainly uh, we have invested a considerable amount of uh, money in the city of Surrey. Um, and I think it represents the view of the government uh, that uh, Bob mentioned and that Elizabeth touched on as well. The growth, uh, both in population and um, in education and in innovation in the city of Surrey is remarkable. And I think untouched anywhere else, not only in Canada, but in North America. We have here in Surrey the ability to attract industry that before this would never have considered Surrey. Um, what, what do you think were the, was the turning point? Well, I, I, uh, Elizabeth said it well. I think we went through a great period of growth during the dynamic era of Diane Watts, uh, who became a real uh, leader and champion uh, for the city, um, not only business-wise, but culturally and every uh, life aspect, every aspect of life that is so important, uh, she considered important to the future development of the city. We're actually uh, today the beneficiaries of much of the uh, policies, uh, building-wise and process-wise, that was put in place by uh, Diane Watts. And that kind of leadership vaulted us into a position uh, where we could uh, open the doors, and that's exactly what happened. Bob, how does it then sustain? Pardon? How does it sustain itself? Uh, I, I, I think, you know, tearing a page out of Elizabeth's book is really paying attention. I think you have to curate your downtown. I think you have to have a real, you deliberately get the right restaurants in, get, get the right, whether it's art galleries, whether it's phone stores, but, but the, the, that livable, walkable, enjoyable, should you have hanging flower pots and outdoor cafes? Absolutely larger overhangs, really pay attention and, and get it livable and walkable. Because, you know, I've been doing this for 45 years. Definitely 45 years ago, there was a certain cloud over Surrey. Whether that was removed 15 years ago or whether it was 20 years ago or five years ago, but it's, it's pretty well gone. And when we, when we did Woodward's, we took out large ads that if you've lived in Vancouver all your life, you look at Woodward's as questionable and forgotten. If you have lived in anywhere else in Canada or in the world, you look at it as emerging. And Surrey is, is fresh. It's looked, at it, it's looked at as emerging, that it still has room to go and room to grow. And I think you've got to capitalize on that and keep, keep moving that, that bar along. Because you can't say that you're, you have the largest population at the end of this decade in the province and not be a contemporary yeah. city. Yeah. And I think, I think Diane did put that stake in the ground really, really well. And you know, you look at Century Group coming along and, and do, put, putting a hotel in, putting the tallest tower in. I mean, that was a huge bet. I know it was done with SCDC, but that's the sort of visionaries you need here. I mean, PCI is bringing, bringing out real commercial tenants. Like I have to mention everyone in the room, Larry Fisher, what he's doing at Innovation Boulevard. Like the, but those are the, that, that's what's going to keep it sustainable. People want to go where other people are. It, it, but one of the areas that you've uh, engaged in over the last number of decades has been cultural life. Cultural life. Yeah. So where, what, has to, um, what has to extend here? I, I, I don't think you need to do what... Vancouver's trying to do and spend a half a billion dollars of taxpayers and philanthropic money with a with a museum. That's my fight to fight. But I but I you know the Surrey Art Gallery has a phenomenal reputation in British Columbia. I think you got to start capitalizing on it. But but you 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 need a small Queen Elizabeth Theater of some sort because you 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 know everybody gets restless and you have to make sure that you're paying attention to the cultural diversity out here. Um, I was saying earlier that Matt Hearn, who works with underprivileged youth, what, what he's doing out here with, I, I don't want to use the word disenfranchised, but, but a, a, very, a, a very diverse group of youth, getting them involved in arts and culture. We decided as a company, let's, 
let, let's help move that along. But it's a lot of finer little gestures while you do your Queen Elizabeth Theater. And you know, the, the next two towers to go up close to City Hall, give them the density so they can do that. Take some, take some cultural risk. Hmm. Elizabeth, when you talk to your members uh, about their ambitions for the community, what do they, what do they tell you in general? What, you know, how ambitious can a city like this be? That's a great question. Because we are so culturally diverse, it's taking all of those ideas and intertwining them to, to, in moving the city forward, and in particular the downtown, because let's face it, we all want to go to a downtown and congregate, and there is and will be life after COVID. And having said that, we look at um, right now to activate places and, and spaces is placemaking in a smaller way to, to have the people who are here to enjoy the atmosphere of um, becoming a, a real downtown. But uh, Bob, you're absolutely right. We do need a, a theater, and that's one of the areas the, the BIA has uh, championed on and, and we look to. But uh, there's so many other things that we require and we need, but it's all a building process. And it wasn't, it wasn't built yesterday. It's been built slowly with some great people at the table with great directives from um, the city moving forward where there has been um, a focus this year to build city center and a wave of, of, of some of the development fees uh, to ensure that city center actually builds out where, you know, from uh, a health and technology sector where the LARC built his, uh, a LARC group is building uh, down uh, the hospital and the new veteran center um, with their city center three project uh, which I understand is almost full, and uh, just moving forward from a standpoint of, uh, of that and, and uh, looking at um, other developers coming to the table and who are interested also in the downtown core. I just had one yesterday call me and, and chat with me for an hour on, on, um, uh, on the happenings of the downtown. Yeah. But you've got a lot of money out here. There's a very rich South Asian community and we've always run with arts and culture that you do something they like and they will begin to like what you like. And I, I think that those big city gestures of having the pillars of the South Asian community get behind a Queen Elizabeth theater type, type venue and that engagement. It can be used for multicultural, but, but let, let those pillars of the community get their names on things and, and get involved right in the center. Yeah. Not, not being isolated. Gary, I want to, you to take the, the, the cap off uh, politically for a second and just talk about being a resident here. You know, being a, a resident who has seen the history pretty well. And talk about your own ambition here, your own ambitions for the community, what you want it to become. Well, I think, um, and I've always felt this way, I think we should be or could be uh, the cultural capital of British Columbia. We have all of the ingredients, uh, the uh, wonderful tapestry that comes from uh, different cultures and backgrounds. Um, we have the ingredients, I think, uh, to do that. When uh, Diane Watts was mayor, she always talked about the city of Surrey uh, being the cultural capital because of what we had. All of those ingredients, uh, when mixed together, form this wonderful union together and um, uh, if I were to isolate what I believe to be Surrey's uh, strongest asset, it would be our people and that comes from the cultural uh, mix, the various uh, demographic groups who have decided to make Surrey their home. We're very young, we're very multicultural, uh, so we have this huge opportunity uh, to become in a sense a real world-class city in the sense that we can have all of the arts uh, and culture that our various groups uh, bring to us. I think that, uh, in reality, is the destiny of Surrey if we do things well. Yeah. Has the city put those, those lands aside for a Queen Elizabeth Theatre type development? I don't. Well, certainly the city has, uh, has a tremendous bank uh, of land 
Um, there is tremendous investments b uh, been made in parks, for example. We were, for a while, known as, as the city of parks, which is a good thing. Uh, people have to uh, recreate uh, in surroundings that are, are uh, suitable. We spent, uh, the city of Surrey has spent a tremendous amount of money on um, um, uh, ice uh, arenas, all of those kinds of things. So um, there has, particularly in the Indo-Canadian community for some time, uh, been a desire to uh, build, um, and in the uh, Filipino-Canadian community, a desire for an individual cultural center. Um, I think the uh, congruence of that should be a multicultural uh, center that uh, right. embraces and acknowledges all of the ethnic groups that have contributed to Surrey. I want, want to talk before we get to some questions online here uh, about just the reality of today and what COVID has done in the way of either interrupting, disrupting, perhaps uh, entirely changing the outlook on this. What are you starting to experience, Elizabeth, in terms of the, the climate, the mood of the business community here, in terms of uh, how it's affecting its ambitions, and perhaps how it's perhaps altering a little bit of the game plan? One big kudo and shout out to our provincial government is they, A, kept the construction industry open, and everyone put protocols in place, and that was a huge boost to Surrey. Right now, from uh, January till June, we're sitting at $800 million in building permits for the city of Surrey. So that is excellent moving forward. Um, so from a business standpoint, we're seeing, when we first initially went into the, the shutdown, if I can say that, of the business community and many of the smaller businesses uh, that was in March, uh, from then till now, we see businesses opening, they're interested in coming back, they want to come back, they can't afford to stay closed any, any longer, and it's vital, whatever we do moving forward, we have to ensure we open with care, we take care of our customers, and we also take care of ourselves and our staff as well. So that's what we're experiencing. Currently, our office has a number of summer students that are reactivating. We've also realized that many of the small businesses aren't on any type of social media platform. Yeah. And in order to survive today, let's face it, technology is number one. You have to have some media presence. And so that's what we're doing as a BIA behind the scenes from a marketing standpoint to help our businesses moving forward. And then gift cards to reactivate restaurants and, 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 and the stores and the retail aspect of things. Okay. Bob Rennie, what, what yeah. do you notice here in terms of an altering so we, of, of the we, community? We run everything on BC before COVID, during COVID, and after COVID. And I think a lot of us are trying to put in long-term solutions for a short-term problem. That, you know, I'll just say in building design, we're, we don't need four extra elevators because there's one person per elevator 36 months from now because we'll either have a Tylenol COVID, we'll all have had COVID, or there'll be a a vaccine. But one thing that um, I'll blame our government on is Bonnie Henry has done such an unbelievable job. And I think everybody in this room, and I have like a broken record on this, is she has done such an amazing job that our province, I think we have the lowest deaths per capita of regions of over 5 million, five in, million in, yeah. in the world, that we're going to all be judged on how we handled COVID-19 in healthcare. And we judge this region on livability, walkability, on climate, on education. And now one of the number one metrics, we don't understand, we can't see the forest for the trees. We're gonna talk about this the rest of our life. People will say, what did you do during COVID-19? And we'll all say we're with Kirklapoint. That's what we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll say. But uh, it's going to add more pressure to our region that we don't understand yet. But uh, where, where, are the, where are the great pain points there, Bob? Is the it the pain points are- Long term I care, I, is it- uh, Child care? Is it uh, it's, uh, it's, mental it's, health? It's, what what it's, are these? It's going to be on transit, and it's going to be on affordability. Um, when you look at, you know, tie it all in together, Amazon, eleven thousand jobs. Pretend thirty-five percent of them comes yeah. from 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 elsewhere. Uh, we said six months ago the riots in Hong Kong. Here come the three hundred and thirty thousand passport holders. They didn't come, mm -hmm. but they are now, because of the authoritative state 
and possible 45% tax that's coming. There are pressures that we're not looking at holistically. But there, there's social imbalance in the world and there's COVID. But I think COVID is adding a new pressure that it's highlighted, I think, in a lot of cities in America that with social unrest, do I want to have 100,000 employees in any one city again? Because this is a pandemic. We haven't even looked at cyber warfare. We haven't even looked at germ warfare to come up. So you're going to diversify, and we are one of those cities you're going to diversify, one of these regions you're going to diversify jobs to. Um, I personally think that you know, Amazon would have done a lot better coming out here and where the people can afford to live. But because we've got transit, they're all going to live here and, 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 and work, work in town. But I, I think that coming out of COVID, that, you know, we had the Olympics and we handed out a business card to the world and they kept it. Sorry, we had the Expo 86. We did it again with the Olympics in, in, a, in a very strange way. How we handle COVID-19 is another one of those handing out our card to the world. And we're not prepared for the pressure. The media will tell you housing is going to fall in price. Evan Sadal told us prices were coming off 18% in Canada. CMHC would change it to 12%. Not here. It's different here because we don't have the supply. And Gary and I were talking just briefly that I, I think we have to find some way to take away the, the politics of housing and just start to marry to, to immigration. We're all looking at immigrations off. We'll get, what, 75,000 people to Canada this year instead of 350? So we've delayed it 18 months. Yeah. We have more deaths than births in British Columbia by 2028. So we have to have immigration. But immigration is a deferral. It's not... It's a it, deferral. We're going to we're gonna have to get to five to 600,000 a year, come. not yeah. 350. Right. Mm. And with racism raising its ugly head is another pressure point because Mr. Trump has made it socially acceptable to be, to be racist. I still say the racism here will always be lower than any other jurisdiction in the world because yeah. I'm an optimist. Mm. Gary, beg and, and talk a little bit about, uh, again, what COVID's disruption has been locally, but uh, of course put the, put the cap back on as a political figure and talk a little bit about what kind of representations you have to make inside caucus yeah. and to, you know, to the cabinet as well uh, and to the premier about what Surrey needs in this period here. Yeah. Well, first, uh, I think it's important again to acknowledge the work of Bonnie Henry, yeah. uh, who has been a tremendous uh, advocate for public health. And uh, with that goes uh, willing populace who have gotten on board. Uh, I think the premier today uh, said it quite well that uh, up to now we've been doing very well. I want to shift just for a moment though to I, what I think is a more important topic which is post-COVID and the recovery uh, that is so so important. Um, uh, we don't really know where we are in the pandemic. Are we still far, part of the first phase? Uh, uh, when will the resurgence be? Uh, that kind of thing. But I think, and in government, in caucus, uh, what we've been doing is spending a lot of time uh, talking about and strategizing uh, the recovery post-COVID. And uh, Surrey has uh, an important place in caucus just because of the sheer uh, number of government MLAs from Surrey. So there is uh, this uh, positive and strenuous voice there uh, that is well recognized within government how important uh, Surrey is to the future of the province for many of the same reasons uh, that Bob mentioned. It is uh, livable. Uh, the cost of housing is lower. The cost of industrial land uh, in many cases is much lower. And we're open for business. And, and that's a message that, um, that we repeat over and over again. Um, and uh, I think we're succeeding in the sense that we have seen companies and organizations that otherwise would not have relocated here um, relocate here. And the challenge in government, of course, is to keep, uh, keep that momentum going. And uh, with the cooperation uh, of the city of Surrey, um, particularly the uh, building and permits department here at the city of Surrey, they make it a very attractive place uh, for any kind of industry or business to locate. So um, it's what, not what, a difficult sell in, in, in caucus. Yeah. What can you share though in terms of what the, you think the city and the caucus that is representing it here uh, at, you know, in Victoria is, is pursuing, is, is asking for, is, 
is saying that this, this is something that would really benefit the community? Well, uh, everyone knows, I hope, uh, a new hospital, uh, which is long overdue in the, in the city of Surrey. We've uh, located two urgent care centers here in recognition uh, of the need. Um, hospital um, uh, brings talent to the community. Not only does it uh, serve the medical needs uh, of the citizens of Surrey, it brings some tremendous opportunity for research. It brings uh, some tremendous opportunity uh, for doctors who will be affiliated with uh, universities. So uh, we, um, the total uh, budget that we've outlined so far for uh, recovery is $1.5 billion, which is a tremendous investment uh, across the province. And uh, I'm in there every day, um, as, is our my, as are my peers, uh, fighting for our fair share yeah. of that. And just to dovetail on to what Gary has said, uh, uh, the government just announced uh, late, uh, it was, I, t my time frame's a little mixed up, but. Yeah, what day is it actually? Yeah, is it? That's help, right. help me on this yeah. one. Yeah. $17 uh, million to SFU on the quantum algorithms uh, uh, a program that's in the new sustainable engineering and energy building. Yeah. And that's going to be huge because that puts us on a world map. And um, there's not very many quantum algorithm uh, universities doing courses in, in this type of uh, yeah. uh, education. Let's take some questions here from our Zoom audience. And uh, maybe Elizabeth, I can go right back to you on this one. Uh, one question is, I feel our downtown could improve walkability in particular areas. Gateway is a good cluster of restaurants, retail, but I feel it's inaccessible because one, it's really ugly, and two, it doesn't feel safe at all. Um, talk about walkability in the community and what, what, again, what the association is hearing from people. Well, that's absolutely correct. I mean, it's uh, downtown Surrey is not walkable, but also it's 500 of acres of uh, land that is going to be divided up. And there is a city plan to, um, to divide all of that up as the developers come in and build. As PCI knows, um, in their development plans moving forward, in Gateway, in that entire area, um, Ani has uh, some, some buildings going up as well. From, and, and that's all going to be cut up into walkable blocks like any other downtown. And um, obviously, that will change the space and place of, and the feeling um, of, of that entire area. So, so something that Sa San Diego did is they built, uh, it's not a museum, but they built a planning center where you saw the 500 acres and you saw where everything was going. You, you, you got to experience that. But should you have food trucks and activity in your dead zones so that it is a lot more walkable? At one time, I, I walked Larry Beasley in Vancouver, who was a city planner, from Richards and Hastings to uh, the other side of Maine to Gore. And I, this was, <laughs> I'm old, 25 years ago. And I said, lease everything on the ground and then go curate the street and sublease it for 10 cents on the dollar for five years. And let's get it to where we envision it to be. But I think you, you need some of those big things. But just uh, what uh, Gary was saying, too, what well, one of my fears is that at one point, 57% of our unemployment was part-time workers. They were the first out, and they're going to be the last in. Hmm. Uh, you know, as as travel picks up, and you know, as as we as we see tolerance, and we see a readjustment in, in in how we even travel and move around and go to restaurants, and I, I worry that when that two thousand dollars per month goes away, one worry is why we didn't just give people sixteen hundred and not make them pay taxes on it, because that money is gone. I don't know how we're ever going to tax people in the 2000. But the other thing is, when that money is gone, we're going to have some social unrest, because the jobs aren't there for them to go back to. And I think it's something that I'm sure you guys are looking at, but something that's really, really important. Because when people have nothing left to lose, they resort to anything. But I, back to your street walk, I, I think you should find some band-aids for the next five years of, of pop-ups. So that, that it, because the bad element doesn't want to be around true commercial activity, they leave. It, the, someone's got a good marketing question for you, Bob. Uh, what's your thought on describing the city center as downtown versus city center? Uh, I wrongfully call it 
bank, uh, the region's second downtown. Um, it, it, if it's city center, it's the city center of Surrey. If it's a downtown, it's a region's downtown. So you decide what you want to be. I went out and did a talk like this in Mission, and they had come up with a whole program so five years ago to call it Mayberry. And I said, is there anybody that even watched the Andy Griffith show in this room other than me? Because you've got to be very careful that you're picking monikers that, that suit, it, suit it all. I think if you're downtown, you have muscle. City center might become a little bit too regional. You can be Surrey City Center is our second downtown. You can fit it in. Metro Town wanted to be our second downtown. It is not livable. It is not walkable. It's a hodgepodge the way it was put together. And you have a chance to, to, to be that downtown. But if you're going to have a larger population by 2030 than Vancouver, you've got to envision yourself as that, not where you were five years ago. Elizabeth, you're not going to rename the BIA the city center, the Surrey City City Center no, BIA. It's yeah. a downtown. It was branded that way uh, before I joined, and uh, but it, it, the focus it, of the business community it, is that. And it, then it doesn't matter what you call it because the public's going to decide. You know, we changed the name of the Olympic Village to something False Creek. I can't even remember now, <laughs> and you'll call it the Olympic Village. Like it, you, it's not. Everybody else will decide. Uh, a couple of people are asking about uh, transit options in the area and, and how integral they're going to be uh, in terms of you know, which, which choice is going to be the, the wisest choice and where the money is going to come from. I want to get a little bit of an outlook from the three of you about, about what that really amounts to and how integral these decisions are now in terms of where, uh, where the community will go. Uh, I know it's a touchy subject, so someone's going to have to raise their hand to want to talk about it. I'll, uh, oh, I'll there we start go. because... A volunteer, uh, <laughs> that's good, thank you. Uh, we're a funding partner, and um, uh, obviously it's important, uh, though uh, we will provide a portion of the money. It has to be done cooperatively with the municipal uh, 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 bureaucracy that looks after all of the, the lower mainland. But it is, I think, uh, Kirk, you've... Uh, framed it very well, it is the key to the future development of the region. If you can't uh, conveniently travel within the region, within the region and uh, outside the region, um, then everything else is stifled. And um, so there is a recognition, particularly uh, because Surrey is so widespread, that we have to make uh, it as easy as we possibly can. If we truly want to cut down on our carbon emissions, and we, uh, thereby making it, um, encouraging people to use various forms of rapid transit. We have to have rapid transit. We, uh, people will continue to uh, use their single occupant uh, large cars on our freeways if it's easy for them to do that. So it is, um, it will be a key and we recognize it as such to the continuous and future development of not only the city of Surrey, but the entire region. And we haven't done particularly well at that, we, meaning uh, senior levels of government, up till now. Hmm. Bob? I, I'm just going on a TransLink task force. And I told your buddy Joy McPhail recently on, a, it was a housing forum that she was doing for CMHC, that I don't think the province or the Fed should give a dime towards transit unless they share in some of the density so that they can maintain the transit. Because what happens is, uh, if you look at the Canada line, no density was there. Tr TransLink didn't participate in any of it. The city handed out density like the Beers Diamonds and let it rise to $400 per square foot buildable. The developer makes money selling the condos. The city makes money off the density and TransLink provides the service. So I think that first 100 or 200 meters that TransLink should learn to participate in the uplift in density and insist on density. It shouldn't be a negotiable. You, the, you, we should have density with, with very little parking at all of our stations, but plan on it at the beginning so that you can afford to keep doing more transit. You know, we should have transit out to Mission within 25 years, but unless you participate in that density, you can't afford to do it. And you need it densified or you don't have the ridership. But I, I 
I think transit's going to solve it all, and we're better to spend it now mm -hmm. rather than inflated dollars after 60 months when I think inflation will come in. Yeah. Elizabeth, uh, as a solution, uh, as an option here for a series development, how integral do you think the transit decisions are? They're absolutely vital moving forward. Uh, the key to economic development is good transportation, however that may be, be it, uh, um, you know, light rail, be it SkyTrain, be it bus, be it cycling lanes. It's, it's a combination of all the above. But, um, but I mean, having said that, it, it's a question first and foremost for me would be is how is transit and the mayor's council going to get people back to actually using transit again instead of their cars. That would be the first step forward because that's going to be huge. If you don't have the people supporting the system, even though we build for the future, you have to start with, it's like building a, any I, type of construction. And I think structure. it's density with very little parking. You know, you, youth uh, don't want a car, it's inconvenient. If your friends are all moving around and you're stuck with traffic, you're stuck with parking, you're stuck with gas, you're stuck with insurance, that they're going to rely on car share or public transit. And I think you train people by not putting in the parking stalls. I mean, when PCI did Marine Gateway, were we 0.75 parking there? 25% yeah, of the units did not have parking. They were probably the last to sell. We were training people, but they still sold. And we're moving it along. What is the hub now? 0. 0.8? Pardon? 0. 0.85. So we're, we're moving it along that 15% that of those homes will not have parking. They'll be the smaller ones, of course, where the, afford, where the affordability is. But we should get to within three to four years, only if you've got transit, only 50% uh, of the suites will, will, will have parking. So we gotta train people. But if you insist on the density and you get some of the money from that density, then that density will start to crowd. Mm. I wanna control it all. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think uh, that Surrey can attract big key players like Amazon or Google to retrofit and make this the downtown the city of the future? From my standpoint, absolutely. I think we have all the basics that are necessary to move it forward. Plus we have the population and the youth. A third of our population is under the age of 19. We're going to be 600,000 people next year. So I believe we have it. It's just a case of how we package it, how we frame it, and how we move it forward. Yeah, you, you want to get the law firms, the accounting firms. They're going to have to move to where their employees are. You know, we're all in that debate of we're going to, are we all going to work from home? Well, the tech industry will tell you we are because they already are working from home. And is that going to lead some people to decamp from a city like Vancouver, for instance, and find more space at a better price somewhere, well, somewhere else? It, it's going to, it's, you're describing housing too. You know, I, I without looking at my notes, I believe 51% of all your housing sales this year are townhomes. You have land to build townhomes. We don't have that in the city. And is that a hangover from COVID that we'd like a little more space? We'd like a little more yard and you can provide those things. But you know, if times are most valuable commodity, your employees are going to start to want to be where they live or at least where the principal wage earner is. And Surrey has a really big chance at that. I mean, I, you know, I don't know how much, what office rent is downtown compared to here but that has to really be looked at. I would start to incentivize them to come out and give them no taxes for five years if Amazon will come. Get them in, get them on your drug. Yeah. And I think, uh, Kirk, the um, uh, city is interested in those kinds of opportunities. For example, uh, making land available uh, on a lease or purchase uh, basis so that it is more attractive to locate here to begin with. It gets back to my belief that uh, we have all of the ingredients uh, here. Um, and Bob, it's a marketing uh, thing. How are we going to uh, market uh, the available assets in Surrey so that we become as attractive as we actually are? And that uh, obviously requires uh, a concentrated effort to, to sell ourselves. And I suppose that in 
light of COVID, it's more important that we uh, market ourselves. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know what the city gives you towards branding, but you should have a big branding budget because that's going to bring in more taxes. Mm. And it's, it's sort of one of those things that sits at the corner of the table and it should really come into the, in, into the middle. Uh, someone wants to ask, though, about, uh, about vacancy rates and with, with the development, what the expectation is. And I know, Bob, if you've, you're sitting on any data that you can, you can speculate a little bit about what, what we're going to see here in the way of uh, new shape in terms of vacancy uh, or, or occupancy, I guess is probably the better rate. Occup of rental? Of commercial. Uh, for office or? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know the, off the office market well enough. Are these, these guys would know, but it's, it's tough to get office tenants right now. I mean, for, during COVID, but even, even before it, it, they're just not, they're not there yet. Cause I, I just feel that too many of the decision makers are old guys. And as we start to see the evolution of younger decision makers that they're going to have to go to, you know, when they move to Burnaby, now let's, let's see them move to Coquitlam, uh, move, move to Surrey, um, you know, should Ryan Holmes and uh, Hootsuite have really stuck their stake in the ground out here in Surrey where the, those lower paid tech people can afford to live rather than complain they can't afford to live in the city of Vancouver? But I, I don't know the office vacancies. I just know that, and let, what would Larry Fisher or yourself, you'd need 60% leased up before you'd build a, an office tower? Downtown Vancouver. Yeah. yeah. Out here, um, our towers, uh, post capital was uh, post capital lease, which is 60%. Our second one was paid for by your marketing of selling the tower, the residential tower. See, he told me if I said PCI seven times, he'd say something <laughs> nice. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> always, always got a, always a commercial for Bob. Um, the um, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, Good question here. A very controversial project, of course, in Toronto, the, the project that is now uh, defunct, the, the Keyside sidewalk uh, project that uh, Google was overseeing. Uh, but has the BIA considered mass scale smart city projects? Uh, yeah, with last year's uh, smart city project with the city, we looked at all sorts of things coming together. Um, our our idea of, of pop-ups, as, as Bob mentioned, uh, in empty storefronts to feature uh, artisan artists from different, uh, different ethnic backgrounds and, uh, and to activate um, empty storefronts, et cetera. Uh, we're, we're looking towards doing that once, uh, and, and we have talked about it within the office. It's just a matter of time frame, spaces, and once everything's reactivated, we have to look at that moving forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Gary, in terms of what the, the province you think will be uh, uh, incentivizing and, and uh, encouraging in the next while, a, a project like that one in Toronto um, had its detractors because of uh, uh, considerations around privacy, but it also offered this fascinating opportunity around, uh, around you know, presence of, uh, of internet in such a way that, that a lot of the uh, conveniences could suddenly manifest themselves rather remarkably in, in all of this. So does the province, you think, is it shaping its view about whether these types of initiatives are on its radar in the way that perhaps it was in Ontario? Yeah, it's certainly on the radar. I think that uh, it's fair to say that uh, some of our aspirational projects have been a bit, uh, have been set back a bit uh, just because of, uh, uh, of the COVID crisis and the money that uh, we have dedicated or will, uh, uh, we have dedicated uh, to the recovery program. But I, I, the long-term uh, aspirational goal certainly would uh, help us to envision a project like, uh, like that in Toronto. And I think it's important. I think um, as a society, we have to be aspirational. We have to be uh, forward thinking. We have to, um, uh, as the old saying goes, think of 
things the way you never thought of them before. Some men, um, uh, I, I'm struggling on the phrase right now, some men see things as they are and say, why? Others dream things that never were and say, why not? That would be the category that, uh, that Bob would be in, and we, we all should think that way. Why not? Not, uh, not having to justify on a purely rational basis, but uh, let our minds loose, uh, imagine things like was imagined uh, in Toronto. And uh, there was uh, feedback. And uh, in politics, we know that uh, that will always be the case. There will always be people who say it can't be done or it shouldn't be done or why are you doing that? And that's a legitimate question, but we but, should get beyond that. Bob, does it feel to you like, like a project like that would be a necessity for a Surrey or, or is it better to focus on some other basics? Uh, I, I, for, first of all, I don't know the project well enough, but um, just on what Gary was saying that whether it's that project or anything, I, we're, we're in a reset and we all sit in meetings and we say that word, but then we don't apply it. We, we don't look at what they're doing and, and can we do 50% of it or capitalize on it and, 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 and make it better. But um, it's why I, I use guys my age still want yesterday back and we have to fight that. Like it, 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 all bets are off because we're not coming out of this the same way we were and we're not, we're not all coming out of it equally. Some people are gonna come out where they were and a number are gonna come out below and some will come out ahead and hopefully they weren't just opportunistic to do it. But um, I, I, I don't think anything, whether it's Toronto fits here or we fit there, there's not a one size fits all. Yeah. Okay. I, I was uh, downtown I was, years ago, I was critical of Surrey that, because I, I think Diane said it, that we're going to be like Yale Town. Well, you can't be, because Yale Town wanted to be like Chelsea in New York, and they can't be that. It's just that what is going to be you? We just have to brand ourselves uniquely, and what works at a larger scale city such as Toronto um, might not work here in Surrey. And there's smart cities are are just a, some are technology based, and some are are as I say human based. We we run every project on we all survive in our similarities, but in the end we're only known for our differences. So we have downtown Vancouver, we have downtown Surrey, we have a metro town wants to be a downtown, but what is gonna make you different? Yeah. And that's that livability and walkability where I really feel safe, but I feel convenient because I don't wanna take my car out. But if I have to take it out for five minutes, I may as well take it out for 15 minutes. And those are the thought patterns have to go into building it because you know, our thing with every client we deal with is if you can get a cup of coffee, a stick of butter, and a prescription, you can build the city. <laughs> but what is that? Is it JJ Beans or is it Starbucks? It's Tim Hortons, but what is it? <laughs> <laughs> we have about 10 minutes left in our conversation. I want to take one more um, question here, and it has to do, of course, with the uh, pending economic stimulus that I think we're all, we are all expecting uh, at senior levels of government. Clearly, uh, Gary, you're, you're uh, apprehended with these as well. Um, what are the types of things, do you think, that this community is going to need in the way of stimulus emerging out of COVID. Elizabeth, do you want to start a little bit with that? Uh, first of all, is transportation, transit and transportation. Um, what we also require uh, long term is incentives for, from my standpoint in developing the downtown core, is incentives for developers to develop. Make it as easy as possible. And, uh, and then moving forward, the other thing I see for the downtown is activation of places and spaces. So with that, some type of infrastructure, uh, such as Bob has already mentioned, uh, such as the Queenie moving forward, and um, the economic stimulus uh, to, to move that, move us forward in, in regard to that. So that, that would be uh, the first thing, and then, and then the development of all the town centers in Surrey to ensure that everybody's taken care of and, and the city develops um, from that standpoint. Great, so now I'll get Bob to add his bit and then Gary can just simply say no. tick the box yeah. and say it's all good. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the question so is? On the economic stimulus uh, that, that uh, this community in particular would, yeah, I, would, I, uh, I, it would be wise to receive. 
I, I, I think that there should be a big, uh, that you, you, you should be investing in what we're going to look like tomorrow. And um, even what came up a minute ago of, of taking the areas that are a bit questionable and they're not livable and walkable and going in and le lease, them, lease them out for 10 cents on the dollar and let's, let's clean it up and let's make it very, very presentable so that people want to come here. I think it's the simple things. It's not, let's throw up a, a hundred story tower. It's what can we do at, what can we do at the ground plane? And what can we do to our boulevards? And what, what, what can we really do to attract people that this is a nice, safe place to live? Because in the end, that's, that's what we're all gonna be looking for, especially com coming out of COVID, is our, our value systems are, are a little bit, rather than going for it all, we're gonna do a little bit less, but want to do that little less a lot better. Yeah. Gary, uh, uh, the public consultation period, I think now is pretty much concluded around what the province was looking for in advice and all of this. You know, do you, without betraying what you, might think is going to happen here. Uh, can you at least provide a little bit of a clue on what the general nature of the assistance might look like uh, once, uh, once it comes out in another couple of weeks? So I think we can look at uh, history. Uh, historically, uh, during uh, times of depression, um, in order to stimulate the economy, what uh, has happened, and I predict what will happen here as well, is that we will concentrate on um, those uh, larger scale products that generate income by their very nature in the sense that they employ uh, hundreds of workers who buy at the local stores, uh, who spend, spend money locally. So uh, the government's challenge is to be able to stimulate the economy. In order to stimulate the economy traditionally, uh, we've built schools, bridges, roads, hospitals, etc. That uh, at least part of that is the plan for Surrey. I mentioned uh, a new and very large hospital, um, uh, transportation, uh, investing in uh, building um, uh, rapid transit here in Surrey, again, as a big economic stimulator. I don't think there will be any surprises. That's where governments always go. And I think uh, in this case, we see that as a wise and safe investment, particularly in an area like Surrey. Is there a different apprehension though this time around what kind of stimulus needs to be applied from say other situations like 2008 for instance where now you recognize that business recovery is, is extremely slow, sluggish uh, and that there needs to be a jolt or two that has to come into the mix very quickly in order to reactivate some of it? Yeah, and we've uh, consulted widely, and the results, um, I think you alluded to it, are not, the results of the consultation are not going to be released for about another week. But um, uh, generally speaking, uh, my inclination would be that there is an expectation uh, that we do what traditionally has been done, which is uh, uh, stimulate through, uh, through building, whether that be a bridge or a road or... Uh, SkyTrain uh, Hospital. Great. Well, listen, we, uh, we've spent an hour together on stage, and uh, it's been, been great to have, uh, to have all of you with us. Do you have any closing thoughts that you want to talk about? And Bob, Just uh, Bob? on the way out here, somebody sent me a press release from Councillor Anis, is that how you say it? Um, and I, that um, with SCDC closing down, and it's something we advised um, Canada lands, and I would advise our province and on the tail of what she said is, I, I don't think our cities and our province should be selling land anymore. I think they should do it as 99-year leases. It works for UBC, it works for uh, First Nations, and I think it's something that we should really look at. It was just part of her email, and I thought that was an interesting uh, approach to to keep that land so if we've made a mistake 99 years from now, it comes back. So you have to sell the land for 10% less today, whatever that is. But then the land comes back to the province, it comes back to, to the city. Gary, some final thoughts? Yeah, I would say that it's important that we remember uh, that we're still in a pandemic. And I mean that from a human safety point of view, a human health point of view. Uh, we've expended a tremendous amount of money in trying to uh, 
uh, curb the rapid uh, spread of the onset of the pandemic. We probably have done a better job than any other jurisdiction in North America, but that is because of uh, the public, of, of you all. And although it is inconvenient, it is so important that we not underestimate the tremendous harm that can accrue to everyone if we don't pay attention. Are you worried we're getting overconfident? I am, and so is uh, Bonnie Henry, and I think she said that again today. That, um, and I don't want to be an alarmist, and I consider myself to be an optimist, uh, a pragmatic optimist, albeit. Uh, I think it's, um, uh, if anything, we perhaps could be accused of um, not emphasizing it enough. I, it's uh, probably the most important uh, crisis uh, that, that we'll face in our lifetime. And uh, we can only get out of this if, uh, if we carefully observe uh, all of the important rules. Um, the economy will never recover if we don't have enough people to manage the economy. So, uh, and I don't want to end on a down uh, note, but I think it's very important that we acknowledge that and uh, do our level best so that the economy is, is there for us uh, in the future. Well, Look after yourself you. and your loved ones. I'll ask uh, the person two meters socially distant to your right to give us our final remarks. So just in closing, I'd, I'd like to thank Business in Vancouver for coming south of the Fraser. Welcome out here. Uh, we, we, yeah, we're happy to be here. And by the way, we, uh, we're now BIV. We're not <laughs> Business in Vancouver. BIV. Yeah. Um, and then for, uh, uh, just to dovetail on to Gary's comments, uh, there will be life after COVID, but as British Columbians, we have to behave ourselves and, uh, and do the right things as, as we on the West Coast and in British Columbia are known to do. And we can do it and we, this shoot too shall pass. But I'd also like to thank the province and the city for, and the development community for putting themselves out there during this very difficult time, for putting the protocols in place and for keeping our economy going. Uh, because that's uh, really been a, a huge asset moving forward. And then uh, for Bob, for, for wrapping everything up in a nice little bow for us, you're just a wealth of information always when I, I hear you present and, uh, and speak. If, if you guys just keep doing this stuff, you're fine. <laughs> like you're paying <laughs> attention. You're having the conversation. That's what a lot of people aren't doing. You're, you're fine. So that's, uh, that's it in closing. And Surrey is open for business always. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Thank Bob. It's been a really good conversation for the hour. I hope everybody uh, on Zoom has enjoyed it and people here have had a lovely lunch and enjoyed it as well. And it's as much as uh, I totally subscribe to what Dr. Henry is doing, it's really nice to have an in-person event, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. It's, yeah. I agree. So thank you for watching and thank you for being here. appreciate your, uh, your inputs today. And thanks, Kirk, you did a fabulous job at moderating today. And thank the Civic Hotel for hosting our great event and most off, the attendees. Thank you for coming today.